Welcome to some dark matter and gravitational details that explain otherwise seemingly unexplained cosmic data. Some of the data that we fit and explain pertain to galaxy evolution. Some of the data pertain to large-scale phenomena, such as the rate of expansion of the universe. Our explanations feature new elementary particles, namely dark matter elementary particles, and the stuff the dark matter elementary particles form. Some of our explanations feature a new look at two-body gravitational forces. That new look points to new properties that gravitational forces, in effect, measure and to notions that interactions based on some of those properties associate with two-body gravitational repulsion. This presentation follows a popular outline for scientific papers. The narration is terse. You might want to, if appropriate, pause the video and read details from some of the slides. You may want to consult the preprint that forms a basis for this video. Introduction This is a list of phenomena that we seem to help explain. The first six types of phenomena involve dark matter elementary particles and stuff that associates with those particles. These explanations tend to be quantitative. The other four types of phenomena pertain to large-scale effects. We use our notions of dark matter and our notions of new gravitational properties of objects. These explanations tend to be qualitative. Here are four ratios of dark matter presence to ordinary matter presence. We seek to explain the ratios and to provide insight about galaxy formation. Here are three ratios of dark matter effects to ordinary matter effects. We seek to explain those ratios. The one-to-one -one ratio might suggest that some dark matter stuff includes hydrogen-like atoms. Methods we suggest that the possible existence of dark matter hydrogen-like atoms points to the notion that dark matter elementary particles exist and might be like known elementary particles. We suggest a notion of six isomers of a set of elementary particles. One isomer underlies ordinary matter stuff. Five isomers underlie dark matter stuff. We suggest a new approach regarding gravity. A notion that Newtonian force laws might be invariant with respect to special relativistic interpretations of properties of objects plays a role. Our approach suggests gravitational properties, beyond just mass, of objects. We suggest that solving, for each one of various electromagnetic properties of objects and various gravitational properties of objects, one equation can help explain cosmic data. Our work suggests a well-defined specification for dark matter elementary particles. The dark matter particles differ from ordinary matter elementary particles primarily only with respect to some might-be symmetries. We use the word isomers to associate with known elementary particles and with five sets of similar dark matter elementary particles. We suggest that a new type of multipole expansion points to gravitational properties of objects that attract two objects toward each other and to gravitational properties of objects that repel two objects from each other. We associate the term surprising with the phrase special relativity inspired suggested extensions to Newtonian gravity. We suggest that merging into popular modeling the above discussed suggestions involves adding, to popular modeling, a new equation. The equation involves two integers. We suggest that choosing appropriate solutions to the new equation helps explain cosmic data and can help tune cosmological models. We suggest that nature includes six isomers of the set of all known elementary particles except for the photon. Across the isomers, the masses of counterpart elementary particles match. Popular modeling suggests that ordinary matter elementary particles that exhibit handedness are left-handed. We suggest that three of the isomers associate with left-handed elementary particles and three of the isomers associate with right-handed elementary particles. For ordinary matter neutrinos, Popular modeling suggests that flavor eigenstates do not necessarily match mass eigenstates. We suggest that, across the isomers, charged lepton flavors do not necessarily match charged lepton masses. The notion that isomer 3 elementary particles differ from isomer 1 elementary particles only with respect to handedness suggests that isomer 3 elementary particles form hydrogen-like atoms. We suggest the term, significantly electromagnetically active, to describe isomer, zero stuff and isomer, three stuff. In terms of popular modeling notions, isomer, three stuff behaves as self-interacting dark matter. For each of the other four dark matter isomers, the flavor one charged lepton mass is more than the gap between the neutron mass and the proton mass. 
For those four isomers, we suggest that stuff evolves, at the hadron level, into scarcely decaying neutrons. We suggest that popular modeling would associate the term collisionless dark matter with the stuff that associates with those four isomers. We suggest the term marginally electromagnetically active to describe this collisionless dark matter stuff. Sprising denotes a special relativity inspired suggested extensions to Newtonian gravity. We consider that an object P experiences gravitational forces that associate with an object A. For Newtonian gravity, relevant quantities might include the mass of object P, the mass of object A, and perhaps the velocity of object A relative to object P. While popular modeling can consider, for example, that object P orbits object A, the velocity of one object relative to the other object does not appear in the formula for calculating Newtonian gravity forces. The force equation might be invariant with respect to the choice of a frame of reference. This leaves the following question. How can one combine Newtonian force notions and special relativistic interpretations regarding properties of objects? Newtonian gravity features one property, mass, of objects. Classical electrodynamics gelled later than Newtonian gravity and suggests at least two electromagnetic properties of objects, namely charge and magnetic moment. Electrodynamics and special relativity embrace each other. We suggest that combining Newtonian gravity and special relativistic notions leads to gravitational properties that include mass, object internal angular momentum, moments of inertia, and moments of inertia rotation. Relationships between electromagnetism and special relativity provide a means that we suggest leads to those four gravitational properties. This slide reviews some popular modeling that combines electromagnetism and special relativity. Object P associates, with object A, the charge Q subscript A, object P associates, with the electromagnetic field contribution that associates with object A, a charge Q subscript A, a scalar potential phi subscript A, a vector potential A subscript A, an electric field E subscript A, and a magnetic field B subscript A. Each of these five quantities increases in magnitude with increasing values of the velocity of object A relative to object P. For our discussion, we plan to use a frame of reference for which object P is not moving. B subscript A is not relevant. KC1 suggests that one can revert some aspects of special relativistic electromagnetism toward a Newtonian-like force law. The key is to add a new component, A subscript A comma V, to the vector potential. The new component can have zero curl and therefore not contribute to the magnetic field that associates with object A. In effect, the reversion detracts from the radial aspects of the scalar potential phi subscript A that associates with special relativistic electromagnetism. Each of phi subscript A, A subscript A comma I, A subscript A comma V, and A subscript A associates with monopole effects. Here, monopole effects detract from monopole effects. KC2 assumes that object A does not move relative to object P and that object A has a non-zero magnetic moment that associates with motions of charges within object A. Again, special relativity suggests that object P overestimates the rest charge of object A. Magnetic moment associates with dipole effects. Charge associates with monopole effects. Here dipole phenomena detract from monopole phenomena. Also, we note that notions of binding energy regarding object A are not necessarily relevant. Case G2 suggests, for gravity, parallels to KC2. In popular modeling, an interaction between the mass of object A and the mass of object P associates with attraction, or pull, of object P toward object A. We suggest that a component of gravitation that associates with the object internal angular momentum of object A and the mass of object P associates with repulsion, or push, of object P away from object A. Also, we suggest that working with masses and mass currents can obviate needs to consider binding energies that might associate with an object. This slide recaps some surprising notions regarding gravitational interactions between two objects. Of note is the notion that for two adequately close together objects gravitational dipole repulsion, or push, can exceed gravitational monopole attraction, or pull. Popular modeling suggests that each object interacts gravitationally with each other object. We suggest that there is one instance of the property of mass. We say that the reach of the one instance of mass is six isomers. Popular modeling suggests that ordinary matter scarcely, 
if at all, interacts electromagnetically with dark matter. We suggest that each one of the six isomers associates with its own instance of the property of charge. We say that the reach of each one of the six instances of charge is one isomer. We suggest, for each gravitational property and for each electromagnetic property, that the multiplicative product of the number of instances and the reach per instance is 6. We suggest, for each one of some gravitational properties and for each one of some electromagnetic properties, that enough data exists to determine the number of instances and the reach per instance. This slide states the one equation that we suggest adding to popular modeling. The examples of suggested uses of solutions to the equation include ones we have discussed and one that pertains to black body radiation, for example from stars. We suggest that ordinary matter charge does not interact with black body radiation from dark matter stars. This slide states instances of properties and reaches per instance that our work suggests. The instances and the reaches per instance help explain each of the approximately 10 phenomena that our work seeks to explain. Our notions of multipole expansions can help explain cosmic clumping of stuff. Two similar non-colliding objects can transit portions of a sequence that starts with octopole gravitational repulsion and ends with monopole gravitational attraction. We suggest that pairs of neighboring similar smaller objects, such as solar systems, transit the sequence more rapidly than do pairs of neighboring larger objects such as galaxies. Results we discuss the extent to which our work fits data and suggests new physics. This discussion parallels the order that a previous list of phenomena that we seek to explain exhibits. We suggest a well-defined specification for dark matter elementary particles and for dark matter stuff. Most dark matter associates with popular modeling notions of collisionless dark matter. Some dark matter associates with popular modeling notions of self-interacting dark matter. Our suggestions about dark matter provide a basis for our explanation for the one-to-one -one ratio regarding some depletion of cosmic microwave background radiation. Our suggestions about dark matter and about gravitational interactions lead to possibly new insight about galaxy formation and evolution. We suggest that each of many early galaxies formed based on reach one quadrupole attraction. Some galaxies were essentially all ordinary matter galaxies. Some such galaxies survive today. Some galaxies were essentially all dark matter galaxies. Some such galaxies survive today. Based on reach, 2 dipole push, some galaxies evolved to have ratios of approximately 4 for the presence of dark matter stuff to 1 for the presence of ordinary matter stuff. Many of today's galaxies result from mergers of earlier galaxies and exhibit 5 plus to 1 ratios. Large-scale ratios of presence of dark matter stuff to presence of ordinary matter stuff are like those for many galaxies. We suggest that asymmetric flows of electromagnetic energy between the stuff that associates with the two significantly electromagnetically active isomers and the stuff that associates with the four marginally electromagnetically active isomers may account for some, or all, of the plus and the five plus to one ratios. This suggestion does not necessarily rule out popular modeling notions such as the possible existence of axions. We suggest gravitational mechanisms that associate with popular modeling notions of dark energy gravitational phenomena. We suggest possible eras in the rate of expansion of the universe, including eras that might have preceded the popular modeling notion of an inflationary epoch. We suggest a basis for why popular modeling underestimates the rate of expansion that associates with the recent multi-billion year era increasing rate of expansion of the universe and for the so-called S8 tension. Extrapolations based on reach, 1 gravitational quadrupole attraction would underestimate reach, 2 gravitational dipole repulsion. Discussion We suggest that, so far, Precision tests of general relativity associate with stuff that associates with just the ordinary matter isomer. Our work does not necessarily call into question applications of general relativity to those circumstances. Other applications of general relativity associate evenly with all six isomers of stuff. Some of these applications, such as applications regarding the Hubble tension, lack adequate accuracy. We suggest that general relativity is not necessarily adequately accurate for circumstances in which dominant reaches of gravitational phenomena change with time. We suggest that general relativity is not necessarily adequately accurate for circumstances in which the isomeric composition of stuff varies spatially. Our work comports with CDM notions, 
assuming that CDM stands for cold dark matter. Our work does not comport with possible popular modeling notions that all dark matter is collisionless dark matter. The lambda in lambda CDM associates with a term in general relativistic equations. Our work does not associate directly with lambda. We suggest that our work comports with successful modeling that associates with the standard cosmological model and that our work suggests additions to that model that can close gaps between data and that model. Our work suggests opportunities for verifying or refuting aspects of our work, based on observational or experimental work. For example, to what extent does our work comport with early universe galaxy formation and galaxy evolution? Did nature form at least as many dark matter galaxies as ordinary matter galaxies? To what extent does it seem reasonable that some of today's essentially all ordinary matter galaxies or essentially all dark matter galaxies maintain their ratios of dark matter to ordinary matter from early in the evolution of the universe? To what extent might observational work regarding the aftermath of galaxy cluster collisions help verify or refute our notions of significantly electromagnetically active dark matter? Can observations help determine reaches for atomic properties other than hyperfine properties? Our work suggests opportunities for enhancing popular modeling. How best can popular modeling accommodate self-interacting dark matter as well as collisionless dark matter? How best can popular modeling embrace notions regarding instances and reaches per instance, for example in numerical simulations? Conclusion our work offers possibly useful explanations for a range of cosmic phenomena. We suggest insight regarding, for example, galaxies and large-scale phenomena. Some of the suggestions feature specifications for dark matter elementary particles and dark matter stuff. Some of the suggestions feature expanding the list of popular modeling gravitational properties of objects. Thank you for viewing some dark matter and gravitational details that explain otherwise seemingly unexplained cosmic data.